Hey guys, this is Layton with Quality Pro Reviews, and before I even go anywhere further into this video, first off, I want to say thanks to all my subscribers. Uh, just a couple of days ago, we hit 500 subscribers, a really huge uh, milestone for, for me, and we're halfway to the 1,000 uh, subscriber milestone, so let's keep hitting that button, and if you haven't already, hit that notification bell. Join the notification squad so that way you know as soon as I post a video. Because my schedule is a little bit weird, I don't really have, you know, a day to day schedule or a weekly schedule. So if you want to be the first to see whenever I post a video, just hit that bell and make sure notifications are on. But I know you just heard that lovely piano in the background in my intro. Uh, right now, we're going to be taking a look at Grand Rhapsody by waves this is their response to a lot of the plugins that have been coming out lately and this is a sample piano library and you know if you don't want to go through the whole uh, first look my first thoughts are definitely this is what I call a producer piano and I'll go into a bit more detail later on but obviously you can hear this thing sounds really good all right so let's take a quick look at the ui so grand rhapsody has a really really lovely ui and i love every little bit of it um just the detail that's put into it is completely awesome uh right at the top you can see we have a lovely uh, graphical representation of a piano and this is a model of the Fazioli F228, if my memory serves me correctly. It is a uh, nine foot concert grand, really nice piano design. You can see right here, we have uh, two mics here. I'm gonna get into more detail about that, but um, they definitely look like Neumann uh, U87s. And you can see we have a lovely keyboard. And what's so cool about this is that actually if you touch the notes on the keyboard, you do get some sound out of them. So that's pretty cool. Also, if you look to the top right, you'll see we have some pedals. Uh, I don't have my, um, my secondary uh, expression pedal plugged in. But if I did, you'd be able to see soft. But for sustain, right now I'm hitting the sustain pedal. So now you can see the pedal going down so that's some really cool um you know functionality and if you listen closely there is some you know some pedal noise i don't know how well you can hear that but it's definitely in there definitely adds to the uh realism of this device right so that is that top half of the ui so what's really nice about this we do have a collapse button right here at the top so if you hit that basically the graphical ui goes away and all we're left with are the uh controls for you know tweaking and tuning this piano to your liking and this is my main reason why i say this is a producer's piano and maybe you could even say this is an engineer's piano just because of all the um tweakability and all the uh, additional functionality we're provided with that we can really craft and shape the sound of this piano. So I'm gonna expand this again just so that we can see visually what I'm gonna be getting into. So as you can see, right here to the left, we have this formant knob, and that's gonna basically deal with the uh, overall sound and timbre of the piano. So the higher you go, it's gonna get a little bit more uh, finer in sound, and the lower you go, obviously, the format will change and the shape will give it much of a lower sound. Uh, the veloc velocity curve is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, based on your keyboard, you might wanna tweak this so that you get the right feel and the right sound for when you're hitting the keys really hard or when you're hitting the keys really softly, right? Next up, we have the mic section, and this is where um, I really like this plugin and where I really hate this plugin at the same time. So I'm gonna explain. So right now for our mic setup, you can see we have condenser 87 close. So we have two 87s, you know, Neumann uh, condenser mics model after the U87s. We can see those up close. So they're right above the piano. They're really, really nice. And we also have a level slider 
which is right now at 90 and we have a delay which is going to deal with mostly the phasing and the sound of the room and we also have the buttons to solo and mute and for phasing all right so if we hit this drop down you'll see we're provided with a couple of options right so we have some ribbon mics we have some dynamic 57 mics obviously um tailored after you know maybe a, a short sm57 we have a condenser 84 which is a room mic we have another rib ribbon which is a medium a ribbon room another condenser player mic which is basically right above the keys we have um some uh 407 um close-up mics other condensers those are more like shotgun mics right and yeah so basically you have three slots for these so you can come up with your own custom setting of how you'd like the piano to be mic so watch what happens when I change the miking. So I'm going to go for the condenser 84 room mic. And if you look right up top, you're going to see this little dialogue that comes up and it says Grand Rhapsody is loading. So this is the part that I don't really like about this. Every time you load a new mic, it has to reload samples. I would have liked to see some sort of maybe this streaming technology where you know it works faster on the fly and I could even possibly preview the sounds while I'm playing until the sound is fully loaded there is no audio so if you hit the keys while the sound is loading no luck so this is one of the reasons I probably wouldn't recommend this for a live setting if you're trying to you know do things on the fly there's a lot of loading time involved so I don't want to be comparing it right now to Keyscape because that's another video, but that would probably be one difference that I see between it and Keyscape. Even when you're changing patches or tweaking or changing things, there's no real huge weight in terms of load time. Pretty much as soon as you change the patch, you can start playing and they give you a preview mode in Keyscape until the sound's fully loaded, which is helpful when you're switching patches or you're making tweaks on the fly. All right, so now we can see we have those condenser room mics set up, stereo of course, and we have two other slots. So say we want it, okay, we want that room mic first. Uh, maybe we wanna bring the level down to say maybe about you know 35 or 36. And then maybe next up, we wanna have uh, the dynamic 57s close up. So now you can see kind of where our, our U87s were before, now we have some 57s. Some, I'm going to keep calling them SM57s, but we got some um, dynamic 57s in that same close range, right? So as you can see, I've loaded some new mics. Again, we get that same message. So while this is happening, there's no sound. I'm hitting the keys. There's no audio. Okay, so now that's loaded. So this one, since it's a close mic, I'll bring this up to about, about 70. All right. And for the last mic, I'm going to use what's called the player mic. And the player mic basically captures a lot of the nuances. Say if I was playing in a room and someone was sitting right beside me, you know, on that piano bench or, you know, right beside me, they would hear my finger tapping on the keys. They would hear, you know, a lot of the wood. They hear a lot of the pedal sounds. So that would be the player mic. So I'm going to have this slightly underneath my close mic so I'm gonna have this around 45 so so right now I have a condenser 84 in the room dynamic 57 as my close mic and a 451 as my player mic so let's see what this sounds like out of the box <laughs>
All right, so that's what that sounds like. And off the bat, you know, great sound. We can tweak this even further. So I want to go through the other controls. So we have a key up slider. So we have a key up slider here, and that's basically going to give us the sound of when we hit a key and then we release that, all right? So let's go all the way up and let's hit a note. You hear that? That's that hammer sound. When the hammer actually goes back up after hitting the string, that's the sound of the hammer going up. So we definitely wouldn't want it all the way there that's really exaggerated right so there it is and of course I demonstrated earlier when we hit that sustain pedal that we had some pedal noise so if we turn this all the way up and then I just hit those pedals you can hear that sound next up right underneath these two sliders you have sustain resonance so just as with uh, any other kind of effect right now, when we sustain the resonance is going to basically dictate how long those notes hold out until they die away, until they dissipate. So obviously, if we went really extreme and we held a note out. you can see how long that tail trailed off for. So the shorter you had that resonance, the quicker the sound will die after you've hit that pedal. All right. So next up, we have a lot of the other controls. Why I say this is a producer's or an engineer's uh, piano plugin. We have uh, compression, so we can turn that up. It would have been nice to have a ratio knob but um, again, this is still cool to have, so you can up the compression on this if you really wanna squash the sound of that piano, you know, maybe for your particular mix. And then when next we have an EQ section. So you have your lows, your mids, and your highs, and you can dial in, you know, a particular frequency for the low, and you have that gain for the low, and the same for the mid frequencies. You can select, uh, you know, a particular frequency and boost the gain on that, and then for the high gain, you just have just the knob. So this would be, you know, more of like an air knob just to add a little bit more, you know, sparkle sheen to your piano track. Right underneath that, we also have a reverb section. So if I just turn that on, and let's go with something really huge. Let's go with a cathedral. All right. So I'm going to bring down by my, my sustain resonance, and I'll bring down my pedal to about 24-ish. So I'm just going to let you hear what the reverb sounds like. So by default, we can see that our mix knob is set at 28. So let's bring it up a little bit more. We can get a bit more of that reverb in there. Also, right beside the mix knob, you can see we have a tail knob, a pre-delay knob, time, damp, and a high shelf. So all the controls you'd be used to seeing, you know, on any form of uh, reverb console or module. And you can see you're provided with uh, a pretty, pretty fair amount of, uh, you know, usual suspects in terms of uh, options of room. So you have recording studio, you have 
uh, echo and and reverb empty hall stage uh it would have been nice to have maybe one or two plates you know but um uh, it's it's a pretty good selection of reverbs to work around with right so those are the reverbs and then we have this lovely uh vu meter which is really cool so you get to see what's happening So that's pretty cool. And then underneath that, we have a limit button, which will work kind of more, I guess, kind of like a compressor, but more of a limiter in terms of, um, you know, really keeping your sound at a particular level and brick walling it. And then beside that, we have a volume knob. So right now it's set at eight. So you obviously can tweak this you know, or maybe you'll want to use your fader channels, you know, for your mix. But I think it's nice having it there as, you know, another option for volume. So in all truth, in all fact, that's the Grand Rhapsody. Really, I like the uh, amount of control that you have. Um, it would be nice to see them maybe in uh, future updates. Find some way to remedy the loading issue when we need to change mics. Um that's my biggest, I'd say, gripe with this uh, plugin. Um, the sound, the sound is great, especially for the price, which I haven't told you yet. Uh, the actual price is sixty nine bucks, but you can actually pick this thing up right now for about twenty nine bucks on the Waves website. So I'll put the link in the description if you want to pick this up. But I definitely think it's one of those tools you want to have in your arsenal if you're a producer. Um, it might not work for every track, but because of the tweakability and the EQs and the different mic options, you can definitely get a couple of different sounds out of it. Uh, it's definitely not the best piano I've ever heard, um, but it's definitely up there. And as a producer, you want variety, you want different options. So this is definitely one of those cool tools that I think, you know, it's nice to have in your arsenal. And hey, right now it's basically 30 bucks it's hard to beat for 30 bucks so if you can i'd say pick this up and yeah go get it so if you like this video hit that like button share this video and if you haven't already please subscribe all right so i'll see you guys in the next one peace